think we can go any further without a little cleanup. We need, uh, this is driving me crazy. The shop is a wreck. There's no surface space anywhere here. Got to do a little cleanup. Then we'll get to the knife. There we go, clean shop, lots of work surface all around. We're ready to dive back in. Have that blade taped up. The guard slipped it back on there, just uh, was having a look at it. But the blade is taped up and protected now. We'll do our sharpening later on in this video. We now have to get to what we're doing with the handle. Now sometimes with projects like this, the hardest part is just deciding your course of action. We have been instructed, look at this, this is a beautiful piece of stag, but it has separated and I can't seem, it must be some warping or something there. I can't quite get it together. It takes a, a large amount of pressure. So this is not suitable, but a bit, I've been requested to save this and reuse it if possible. Option two is a leather stacked handle if we can't get this to work. I think I can get the whole works to work I think we need to do a complete refit of this stag though. So you see we have four pins. I think it might have been glued at some point, but the nothing left there now. Just some remnants I can kind of see that there was there. But uh, we need to get these pins out. We'll overbore, do a bigger pin I think, and we'll need to refit this somehow. I'm gonna start with a drill bit in the drill and we're just going to try to take the bulk out of the peen heads. These are pretty thick here and it's a little bit tricky. I have a diamond coated spherical head on the Dremel here now just to carve off the last little bit of the flange on the pins. And then I'll use a nail to try to drive them back through just because all of my punches were bigger than these little brass pins. Now, if I can just get in between there, should be able to, yeah, give it a little leverage without damaging anything. And the pin should slip back through their holes. See, we have a little closer to marrow exposed there. So you can't lean on that a whole lot. This, this here. You could put a nice amount of force on here without damaging this edge, but where this exposed marrow is, got to be careful. Don't want to let go. There we go. That inside hasn't been seen for some time. Okay, that was tricky, but we got there, got these separated, the pins are out. Now, we can't, well, I guess we could uh, perfectly flat grind these, lap them, and then let them flat fit together, but these were fit angled, and the trench inside demonstrates that they, they both curve, and they're designed to mate one another. It's like when you lap, uh, uh, engine blocks and heads and stuff. You can't always just swap out all the parts if they've been lapped to fit each other. They're not just lapped perfectly flat. They're lapped to fit together. Now one way you can do this, a technique that custom knife makers use, is to use a piece of sandpaper. Let me just get a piece here for example. And let's take this piece and we'll add a piece of sandpaper over it. We'll add this piece on and we'll, we'll work this piece to the other piece. Small movements so you don't start taking away the shape. But these will start to lap together. You don't want to move them a lot and this we don't need a lot of material to remove. You'll start to lap them together. See that the few high spots are getting worked. And you can keep test fitting. And see already, we're starting to just 
nicely come together, to ease together there. Now I'm going to assemble this, reassemble it. You see I've got it on some nails here that are un slightly undersized, but this will let me easily align it for glue up. But I get my, uh, my cyanoacrylate glue from Starbond. But this one here, this medium, is quite runny, and it'll do a nice job. We can soak. Uh, I'm going to completely saturate this marrow, and we'll do outside as well and sand it off flush after. But that will help put the rigidity in this that it just doesn't have at this point. Yeah, and it's just, just drinking this glue right now, getting all down into those pores. Won't have to worry about a good bond. And this will give a little bit of gap fill effect as well. So make sure you get it right. Ah, let's get it right. Come on. What I've done now, all I had here was one eighth inch brass pin, so I chucked them in my drill and I just filed them down, ran them in on the grinding belt and just kept trial fitting each one. And then I actually, it was coarse enough that I was able to keep them chucked and drill them through. So these are ultra tight, just like that. You could flush grime and leave them and they would never back out. Super tight. Um, but now what I'll do is I'll snip these, rough snip them, then grind them almost in, leaving a little bit proud enough to peen heads on both sides. Then we'll have a super tight pinch fit. This would be great using the existing holes. We shouldn't have really gone over much. <laughs> Okay, here's the big moment. Uh-oh. Now we're in serious trouble, but I expected since we lapped it in, expected we'd come to this problem. Let me show you the tool I have to fix this. Now here's a tool I created one day in about four minutes. You can buy something like this. Uh, it's a, called a broaching tool. Now what I did is I had a scrap piece of old one. You see, I never did put like a handle or anything on it. I had a scrap piece of old one tool steel, my favorite. And I carved it down nice and thin so it could fit in a shallow way, less than one eighth inch thick. Now what I did on this side was I made a couple cuts with my bandsaw. Then I put it in the vise and I slant filed one side of those cuts. Took the blowtorch, give it a quick heating, a quench, quick temper, all of this in a matter of just minutes, 
and this works i've had this for years and it really works in situations like this because until you're in this game and you've come into all the different scenarios of things that can go wrong you <laughs> you realize how valuable specialty tools are you wouldn't think that there's no way to open this up how would you do that you try to think without something like this how would you open up this keyway that drill bit can't really do it not sensibly definitely can't cut it from scratch you don't get milling cutters that long where you could put it in vertical and side cut it a file would take forever and are usually too thick but this tool right here cuts really effectively you'd be surprised put it in some stabilized wood it will just carve away at it very quickly fitting yeah nice and don't get too excited there because we're not done just yet we're not gonna just settle with an heirloom fit I'm not gonna go that route today I'm going to flush grind everything on the knife a little more work I think it'll be worth it Last little wipe down here to get every compound off. What do you think of that? Very pleased. Look at that. Look at that. What a gorgeous knife. Just beautiful. All nice flush fit now polished brass as it should be gleaming aluminum as it should be we got that stag brought back and because of that cyanoacrylate look at that now do you see how it kind of soaks in and impregnates that that was that punky marrow that you could kind of dig your fingernail into not anymore like glass and it sands up to a glass finish as well see the reflection there look at that that wasn't there before because that was soft marrow. Couldn't have done that, but now the cyanoacrylate polishes up beautifully. There's no gap there. You can see that gloss. Look at that. That's no, no gap. No edge on it yet. I think this video is going to be a little bit too long. It's taken a while, a lot of filming to get here. So I think we'll save the sharpening and leather work for the next video. But, oh, so happy with that. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if it's your first time here. 
share it. That would be the biggest way you could you could help this video if you could. But in any case, I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.